12 foot cattails. Kind of a crazy path back here, but this is pretty nasty. And the trails are all grown in, but this is the route I gotta take. Watching these hunt videos where it goes from one hunt to the next hunt to the next hunt, and just shows the thinking process of how we go through deciding where to hunt can seem a little chaotic because it doesn't really show you know why I'm choosing those areas very well um, a lot of this has to do with my spring scouting it has to do with what I've seen in the past uh, it has to do with how I'm thinking about uh, food and stuff and as I'm going around I'm throwing a hunt here throwing a hunt there throwing a hunt here at places I've scouted or places I know and I'm kind of as I'm going through I'm looking at the sign I'm looking for ropes, I'm looking for scrapes, I'm looking for big tracks. Signs that there's a giant buck living there. Or hopefully you see one, right? But at the same time, I'm putting myself in really good areas that I know have opportunity for big bucks. And I throw this wide net out there over a whole bunch of properties. And what happens is you start to find big bucks here there some of the places and you start to ignore the places that don't have the sign because there's not a big buck on every property every year guys that lock into one property and that's all they hunt man that could be that could be <laughs> a frustrating hunt if there's not a buck there um in some places you do have a buck every year on a certain property if it's a great property but that ain't everywhere and things happen people move into your areas ruin them and such but as you follow along these videos you'll see there is a method to the madness you're going to start to see now as we're getting a couple weeks into the season how i'm focusing in on certain areas now that i'm finding big bucks focusing in on those bucks i'm not hunting them every day i might hunt this big buck one day that big buck based on the wind and just kind of moving around and not putting too much pressure on them but there's a method to the madness and now i'm starting to focus on certain animals this is my backup spot my primary spot had sign of hunters there's trail cameras and a bunch of hunter sign so i quick ran over here which is putting me behind times so i've been racing back here so i'm sweating like a pig and i've just been busting through these cattails and at this point I gotta slow down, so I stopped here to catch my breath for a second. Now I gotta go slow, because I'm within that like uh, 200 yard range, and uh, I don't wanna be jumping bucks. So I'm gonna go in here somewhat slow from here on out. You can kinda see some trees in the background a little bit now. Uh, those are the start of the little island that I'm gonna be on. All right, a little running around today changing spots at the last minute but uh, I'm settled in now I've got a little bit of history with this spot I haven't hunted here in a couple of years but uh, I've brought friends in here that have killed some good bucks I've killed some good bucks here and uh, seen some other big bucks I was hoping these acorns are dropping they've been hit or miss around here these ones aren't there were some back there dropping I don't see a lot of big buck sign I don't see no rubs much but the ground's real hard and it's hard to tell and there really ain't no time to move um but they bet on that little island there they come in here they bet on the outskirts they bet on that island over there and they come in right here and i can kind of cover everything from this beech tree here well i didn't see a damn thing on that hunt and when i got in there you couldn't see much for deer sign not even really browse not tracks, not nothing, but now the ground's hard. You know, there hasn't been much rain. A um, hundred deer could walk through and you wouldn't see the tracks. But I didn't see a lot of browse. The acorns weren't dropping. I wasn't real impressed with the sign. But I just know historically that's a good point. And to hunt these, you know, mature bucks, you kind of got to hunt based on terrain. You gotta hunt where you know they should be. And I had to mark that spot off the list. 
And what's interesting is, you know, when you don't see nothing like that and you didn't like the sign and stuff and you had a little shadow of doubt, you, you know, I didn't have my confidence quite up there. You know, I was kind of wishing I would have went someplace else. But I did my, you know, due duty and I stayed there for the duration because I knew the potential of that spot. Then when I came out, I came out different than I went in. I went in a little different because I didn't want to go through hunters to get where I was going. And there's some trucks here when I got here. So I went a way that I knew I wouldn't go past anybody. Wouldn't uh, let them know where I'm hunting kind of thing. Um, or interrupt their hunts. So I came out just a straight line, the easy way. And when I got to um, the trail that comes out of there and up onto the next point... There was a rub. I really couldn't film it in the dark with a headlamp. But that rub, the center of it was chest high on me. There was rub marks from tines over my head. And I'm six foot one. The deer that made that rub was a big buck. An old buck. Without a doubt, the kind of buck I'm seeking. So, two things. Number one, that confirms I was in the right spot, just the wrong day. They haven't been out of velvet that long. You know, a week and a half, two weeks they've been out of velvet. You made that rub within that time frame, that rub is coming out of bedding. So let's say he's been out of velvet for two weeks. One in 14 odds I was there the day he was. And it was that close to betting. I'm sure he came through there in daylight. Number two, you show me your cards. You show me you're there. That rubs in the center of public. It's nowhere near private. It's not even near a border. I know he's living there. You don't want to tell me where you live. When I'm kind of a serial killer <laughs> kind of guy. You know, I might hunt you down and kill you. So now I'm starting to narrow down my focus. The spot I was the other night, jumped a good buck. Saw him, got my eyes on him. Now here, I found sign of a big buck. And there's another spot where there's some rumors going around and I got one pitcher of a giant, and I kind of know where one lives. So I've got three focus areas, and I can kind of start shying away from all the other stuff and just think of that as like spam. You know, I might, you know, when the winds aren't right or something, I might go check those out too, here periodically. But my focus now is going to be killing one of these three bucks. Mission accepted. So I haven't been in this area quite a while. The last time I was in this spot hunting, I shot a 165 inch buck. It was the fifth day of the season. This is a really good early season bedding area. The reason I haven't been back is somebody's been in here just pounding this ever since I, I was in here. Um, and coming back here, I found a trail that they actually cut branches and stuff for almost a half mile to get back here. The cat tells everything. They, they just made this massive trail. Um, but the tree I used to hunt out of has grown in. And uh, you couldn't shoot out of it anymore. You can't see nothing. It's a wall of trees. And it looks like the guy is setting up back further. I found his trail camera. It looks like he's setting up where the rubs come out of here. Those bucks come out of here multiple ways. Um, I didn't see no sign over there, but right here, this is just loaded with big buck sign. So I know there's a big boy in here right now. It's just a matter of if he comes out today. I don't think that guy has seen him yet. He's got, he's got a trail camera over there, but this doesn't look haunted. I found his tree over here where he moved forward and it's a, it, you can tell he was sitting in it with a saddle. 
nothing's been cleared out and it looks like it's grown too much this year for him to even use the saddle in there unless he clears this out. But this is just pounded with buck sign. Now I gotta find a way to hunt this because there is a good buck using this, obviously. And uh, I'm thinking I might be able to get into this little beech tree just high enough. But man, I just gotta be able to shoot over these bushes. Otherwise I gotta get on the ground. If I get on the ground, I ain't gonna be able to film it because all I got is the handheld camera here. But I think I can get into that tree. It's gonna be shaky though, I'll have to see. I'll give it a shot, but there's obviously a lot of sign of deer coming through here. Most of the rubs are dry. Could have been a week ago. I don't know. Maybe that guy's been in here, spooked it out. I don't know, but there's an awful lot of sign. So we'll give her a shot. Somehow or another, I'm gonna hunt this spot tonight. It's not the greatest setup at, at all. I'm actually set up in a deer bed. And I bent over some branches and stuff to have a shoot at the shot at the trail. He comes around the corner of that bush right there at 10 yards. I have a shot. I'm going to have to be drawn before he gets there. It's iffy at best, but it's a uh, close range. I think I can pull it off. Um, the trail goes through right through here. It goes into there, and there's all kinds of rubs and stuff in there. And that's where the old tree was, and I shot that other buck right over there as he came through here and went that way. So that trail splits and goes two ways. One goes that way, one goes this way, but this side has all kinds of fresh sign on it. I didn't look at that side. They come out of this stuff here, so I'm blocked by this. And when they pass here, I have a shot, but I don't have a tripod with me, so I don't even have anything to rig the camera up on. It is early enough if I could find a pole to stick in the ground, maybe I could put the camera arm on it, but ain't much available right here and I don't want to make too much noise. I get into these situations every now and then where you go out in this public and you get in an area and you can't find a tree and you end up having to hunt off the ground. You don't have a stool. You're not set up for the ground. You just have your tree stand and stuff. And uh, sitting on the ground isn't too effective. Having a stool is perfect. And I've always wanted to sit on my stand but when you sit on it, it kind of folds. show you what I did. First I tried uh, I tried strapping it to the back of the stand. That didn't work too well. But then I took a stick and I wedged it in there and up against here. And it's rock solid. It's comfy quiet. It's just like sitting in the stand. And then I got a perfect shot right through here. As he walks out. And it's so dead quiet. I'll hear him coming and I'll draw way before he gets there. Well, that's about all she wrote. Time for the long walk out of here. But once again, I'm in a shift. Yeah. Last time I hunted, I saw that giant rub over there. I get in here, this is all tore up with rubs, big rubs. There's something big living in here. I gotta make some more moves around here, get out to the fresh sign. I think I'd have killed this deer today if it weren't for that other guy getting back here. He wasn't set up right here, he was set up over a little bit. I think he just blew the deer out of here. All right, I got my stand set up. I got one stick, two stick, and the stand. The platform's six feet up, and I just got a little hole through here, a little hole through there, a little hole through there. And I really don't have much of anything if they come from behind. But there's tracks coming through here all over the place. But I'm thinking they're coming from that way, and I'm hoping they're coming from that way. So, I guess we'll find out. The wind is supposed to be going that way anyways, but it's really not. It's all thermals right now, and the thermals is kind of drifting down this way, which isn't ideal, but it's what I got. So I'm gonna get up there and let it settle down and see what happens. I did uh, one time about uh, five years ago, came back here with Dave, and we hunted about 100 yards that way. And right along this edge, I saw a couple different bucks go through that one day. 
when I made a move, we never seen him again. But uh, so I'm keeping an eye on that edge as well. I walked in here like this. This area is just like a buckthorn strip. It's got a few like box elder trees like this one in it. And uh, there's a creek, fairly deep creek that runs right over here at about 50 yards. The other side of that creek is private. And typically the deer travel seems to come out of here and here. Um, but they could come from behind me too, but I think the food's that way. However, I'm not positive. But this is a little funnel here. As you can see, there's like open grass over there. This is the little funnel, and I really didn't hit much deer sign over there until I got into here. Now the trouble is it's supposed to be a east, south, east wind, which would be blowing almost straight that way. And in here, there's hardly any wind. The thermals are just basically pulling the other way. Now that I say that, I'm feeling a little wind in my face, but I was dropping milkweed, and it was drifting right over here. And there's a main trail that comes right through there with big tracks on it. So I was gonna sit right there. But that would put that thermal drop right into there. You can't feel it, but when you drop milkweed when it's dead calm, it ends up over there. But if I sit in this buckthorn tree, I can get it to go over there and I have a shot when that buck turns the corner. I also have a shot into here and I can see a trail back there. And I think there's gonna be some movement through here. I mean, I don't know. But I know there's good bucks in here and you hunt where good bucks are. So, we'll make our move here, try this spot. If this don't work, we'll try a different spot. We'll see. I really don't like this tree. That tree over there is kind of much better for a tree stand. But you gotta have the wind right. So I'd rather not risk it and miss one of my trails. I'd rather up my odds that the deer shows. Might be a funky tree, but I think I can kill a deer out of it. I just saw a deer drop into the river there at 30 yards. I couldn't tell what it was, but it was a big animal. At least it appeared to be. Right where that brush is there. Well, that's all she wrote. No other deer. Eric drove out to uh, hunt with me today. And uh, before he came out, I got a picture on a cell cam that I have back in here that uh, monitors deer coming out of this swamp towards this uh, uh, crops on the private. And it, the pick was at like 
late this morning heading into here and where it's going I know the only bedding I know of is on a point that is kind of surrounded by water and there's only one way out this way or towards Eric I mean a deer could filter in between us but uh, if that buck's in there it should come by one of us not a pitcher ain't the greatest and I can't tell how big it is but it looks like it's at least a three-year-old buck you can kind of see a good frame on you can see a couple of times but they're kind of the sun's blinding the pitcher a little bit but even coming back here I mean not even back there yet and then this little pile of bushes here there's a big bed in the middle and uh, look at that rub it's broken off that uh, tree's got a thumb diameter to it he busted it right off he busted the one off that's adjoining it it takes an animal with a neck to do that. There's a pretty heavy trail going right through there. Mm. So, maybe we'll have a run with them today. We'll see. The whole point is surrounded by water. You kind of see the water in the distance there. That comes up here, and then the waterway goes around. And I'll be on this end of the point, and Eric will be on the other end of the point. We know that deer went in there, and unless he went swimming, <laughs> He's still in there, unless he turned around and came out, but it was bedding time when he went in there. So, we'll see. Just taking it easy, taking a break here, and gonna kind of slip in. We're really early, so I'm just gonna slip in real quiet, try to move with the wind and with the other noises. I'm three sticks up, and uh, I'm really low, but this is where I gotta be in order to shoot under this canopy because this is a lot of buck for these buck thorn trees are bushy up high and open down low. So it gives me a shot through here where there's a trail that I saw from scouting that went through right there coming out of the bedding. But the main trail comes through right here. And uh, bedding is not very far away. About 50 yards is where I found the big buck beds. But I also found them periodically along this whole ridge over here. And then Eric's at the other end of the ridge. So they either got to come out of here through this grassy stuff or they got to come up this funnel or Eric's funnel. We'll see if it works. Um, one problem is it's so thick in front of me over here that I can't see one coming. And if he pops out right there, I'm not going to be ready. Hopefully it gets dead calm and I can hear him coming or I can see a glimpse. I may have to stand as much as possible when it gets towards prime time. That deer really can't go out the other way because he'd have to go through open water over here or open water over there. So if there's a buck in there, he has to come out somewhere over here. He could get between me here, but he has to come this direction. I think we, we've got a pretty good setup. Right now I'm navigating to a spot. That straight line from the truck is about a mile. I think it's going to take me between a mile and a half and two miles to get there walking because of the way I got to go about it. You can't walk through lakes. You can't walk through some sort of muck. You have to go around the obstacles. Um, I've been walking for about 20 minutes now through swamp. And uh, now I'm going to navigate to an island up here. And then from that island, I'm going to go across that island. It's a pretty big island. And I'm going to dump back into the swamp. And at that point, I'm going to get to where nobody goes. And then I'm going to go back to something I scouted in the spring. I don't know what to make of it because I'm going to get so far back, I'm going to get near a lake. And the lake probably has duck hunters in it right now. But I do think all the bucks, the good bucks, could be back in this area coming this way. I've hunted this, this area back in here. And even this island I'm going up onto uh, already. And uh, I think the bucks are further back. And my scouting kind of showed that there was really good buck sign further back. There's been a lot of pressure right in this area, believe it or not, on the mainland and then even navigating to this island of squirrel hunters. It's kind of crazy how nuts these squirrel hunters are. There's no way they're getting to that island without, you know, at the least knee-high boots, and if they're wearing knee-high boots, they're getting wet. I don't know if they're wearing waders or what, but uh, there has been guys 
hunting squirrels on an island. Um, crazy. But they're pressuring the deer pretty good, pushing them back. And uh, the area we're going is where nobody goes. And when we scouted in the spring, me, Eric, and uh, my son James, we found a uh, pretty good sign of big bucks living back there. Well, break time's over. Time to hit it. It's going to be a long walk in and a long walk out. You know, I come back here in these spots, you know, and you, you think about it, it crosses your mind, man, is it going to be hell coming out of here in the dark. I'm just coming back from this island here. It's hell in the dark. And I'm going to go way beyond that. But you know, what's the worst can happen? You walk, you walk an extra hour, you know, you get a little muddy, you get soaked. You ain't going to die out here or anything, so. Might as well as live the adventure and just let the cards land where they land and realize there ain't nothing really dramatically bad that's going to happen. So you might as well just take a chance and go after some of those crazy hunts. You know, it's going to be a hell getting out of here at night. But uh, even more hell if I kill one. But we'll deal with that when it happens. You don't kill them by worrying about where you kill them. You kill them by, by going where, where you have to. And killing them where they're at. Well, it's been hell getting back here, but I'm just starting to close in now. And now all of a sudden I'm starting to see bucks on big tracks and stuff. And I just came across this really high up rub that is just really, really ripped up. And the branches all around are nipped off. And you see a deer was standing around it. It was a high deer that did that. That ground through a low where he was rubbing. And even so he had to reach across all that brush. I can see some broken branches down there still have green leaves on them. So that wasn't too long ago. But I am making a lot of noise. Oh, that tree's just mangled too right there. Yeah, and those leaves aren't that dead that old either. This is looking pretty good. I'm gonna go up just a little further. Although this doesn't look like a bad spot to set up. There's a lot of trails that come together and it could be bedded over here. But I know from scouting it looked better just up here. So I'm gonna try and make it there. This is hell. This has just been solid brush like this for about the last uh, eight, nine hundred yards. And I'm only about a quarter of the way through this to get to where I want to go. I'm really not even seeing a lot of deer sign, but my scouting really told me there's some big stuff holding up up there. And I know it comes up onto a little drier land. Man, I hope I'm right. I hope it don't take more pressure to put them out there or this is a long walk for nothing. But my gosh, I got to wonder how I'm going to get out of here tonight. It's such a tangle walking through this crap. This was nuts. If I hump back here, I'm getting back to my truck around 11 tonight. <laughs> but I ran into something that just looks so interesting. Right here, you see where something really big dug and dug up a honeybee nest. I mean, now uh, that looks like bear sign. We've had bears in the area, but not a lot of them. But uh, I don't know what else would dig up a honeybee nest that dramatically. I mean, that is really dug up. I mean, something big was laying there and digging. You know, us raccoons could dig that much. I don't know, it's dug real deep. You can see the bees are still there. It wasn't too long ago. It's kind of crazy. Got any ideas on that? Let me know what you think it is. I went for a walk about today. I started out at about one and uh, I just climbed a tree and it is after five and it gets dark at six. I got into some crap. I, there wasn't that much deer sign back there. I couldn't find my trees that I scouted even though I had points going to them. It was so nasty back there, knee deep muck. I ended up busting out and walking all the way back around. And then the only time I, thing I had time to get into was this tree here that I knew of that uh, I rushed down and got into. Jamie sat this about a, two weeks ago and uh, he didn't see anything. But I sat just about a hundred yards that way and I saw a doe and then I got down and I kicked a, a, a large lone animal. Um, 
that sounded pretty big. And uh, it just seems that more deer are over here right now and moving towards crops that way. I'm just gonna give this island another shot. And the main reason why is there's a scrape right here that uh, is well used. It's worn and it's got giant claw marks in it from a big buck. And coming back in here, coming up the human trail that you know, racing around to get over here, I saw some extremely huge buck tracks going across that trail. So we'll give her a shot. Don't know what to expect, but I'd see nothing. Don't know. I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, there's the scrape right there, that worn out spot. And it's really got some wide claw marks in it. But there's some uh, heavy trails going through here too. There's sign of human hunting pressure here, like a ground blind. And there's some, uh, even coming up this tree, there's some cut branches on it. But um, everything's old. And I think that uh, whoever's hunting here is probably hunting here during the rut. I don't think they think about early season this far back. I don't think anybody's ever hunted here before. Not, not with a bow anyways. Um, guys get in here real heavy with pheasant pressure. They release pheasants in this grass. And this, guys will get in here and they'll push until they hit water out here and they'll push those deer back. And then when we do gun deer drives, we kick a lot of deer out of the water over there. I mean, this is one of our best spots. And over here, um, you just get in here and there's no deer, but there's beds everywhere from early season rubs and stuff and all these heavy trails and then a lot of huge rubs right on the edge of the crop fields and uh, Every year that it's corn over there that corn is marked up heavy with rubs and stuff So what I did was I hooked around the swamp and came in from the corn and uh, followed the trails back kind of um, I tried coming up the uh, tree line on the edge of this um, and the trails never kind of dried up. There's some rubs and some old scrapes and stuff and some brows, but not really what I was looking for. But it kind of led me over here and I knew that right in here there was a tight spot between water and between human uh, access where those deer had to go through from bedding to get over there. And there's just this light tree line with just a couple of trees in here. And uh, I knew getting in here, one of these areas would cover all these trails. Well, right away, that's heavy cattails that dumps into water. And all the grass activity comes right around this little grassy area here. And this is the best access, and you can just see beat trails. And the grass is just mowed down and ripped up. And there's huge bedding areas underneath these trees, which are obviously night beds. And there's some heavy trails going into there, and that's where I found that big rub. And the bedding is about 300 yards that way that I found, you know, that gets hit by the pheasant hunters before I get back here. Um, but that bedding is right back there. So the fact that these deer get kicked back before rut tells me a lot of that sign is probably early season sign. Uh, a lot of it's probably right before pheasant starts because that's when they're starting to really lay down that sign. And right now we got about two weeks, but getting in here, it's pleasantly surprised by a lot of sign here. And I know they're hitting the corn pretty heavy now starting. So hopefully I'm hitting it right. It's a pretty windy day. I hope this is no indication about how my night's gonna go. But we just had a pretty good breeze and my bow flew past my face from the limb I had hanging on and is now 
hung up in a in the brush halfway to the ground and I gotta figure out some way to crawl in there and get it. Really? Really? Got it. So I didn't get the camera up fast. Oh, there was another one. There's a deer running out of there. So these deer must have got behind me on the trail over by where the rub is because the wind's blowing over there. And they came running out through here. I saw a couple of them come out. Hopefully they don't spook the rest. But they were probably bedded further up that way because I don't think they came through here. I guess they could have. You might not notice them because that grass is pretty high. But, uh, well, just like two jumps, you can see them and then you can't see them no more. So that's probably obvious. They could have went through there and I wouldn't have seen them. I don't know. I don't know what they were. just got a glimpse of them. They uh, came out over here went just this side of that big tree. Let's scoot it right back into the bedding area. Hopefully that ain't all that comes out tonight.
they're chasing each other around playing tag. <laughs> was fun. That was a doe and a fawn. They just came running out. Stopped under that tree over there. And then uh, the, the fawn went running off and then the doe went chasing her. And they kept running back and forth all over the place, grunting and chasing. Now they finally wandered off to the corn. In a few more minutes we'll see if a buck shows up. <laughs> But that was fun. <laughs>